Hey brothers and sisters, I wanted to get on here and share with you something that someone I know personally sent to me and it was really alarming and eye-opening. So I was actually sent this from someone I know regarding these past solar flares and the topic of this was called ascension symptoms and different symptoms that people might experience because of these solar flares that are evidence of this ascension. And they mentioned that we are leaving the age of Pisces and entering, it made it sound like we are entering some kind of new age. And it all reminded me of the lie of the enemy. And I don't know if many of you are familiar with this lie, so I wanted to give you a little bit of background about some of the New Age beliefs and some things that are out there that I personally believe that Satan is pushing to explain away the rapture of the church. He has to have a story to explain what happens when many people suddenly are gone after the rapture and i believe this story that satan creates is evidence for the rapture so not only does scripture and the word of god affirm the rapture but also we can see that the enemy is preparing for it and why would the enemy waste his time creating a false story to explain the rapture if the rapture was not an event that will take place that the whole world will witness if the rapture wasn't an event that the enemy believed was going to occur he would not have unbelievers believing an account that mirrors the rapture of the church that would be a waste of time if this event was not going to actually take place unbelievers are being told a false doctrine that mirrors the rapture so that when it happens they will have an explanation for the church disappearing so basically i'm going to let this pastor explain mostly what this new age belief system entails and what they're teaching because he does such a great job with it but I just wanted you to be encouraged that this story is circulating and thousands of people are having these encounters with aliens and I believe they are demonic entities, but many of them are hearing the same thing from these entities regarding a mass exodus of people off of this earth and that those who are left behind will be enlightened and will ascend in knowledge and have this DNA upgrade. Well, those who are in the body of Christ and know the word of God can put two and two together and see that this DNA upgrade sounds much like the mark of the beast that's mentioned in the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 13. So we see the enemy at work in false religions in governments in this push for this one world health one world government one world monetary system we see it everywhere everything is converging like never before and though we do not know the day or the hour take heart and be encouraged because we see so many things converging and when the enemy comes in to steal, kill, and destroy, and try to take away your blessed hope and discourage you and make you think that you're going to go through God's wrath, take heart and be encouraged that really the enemy is trying to make us doubt, but at the same time, he's trying to prepare unbelievers for this very event because it will take place. The enemy knows it will take place and he cannot wait for the exodus of the church, for the restrainer to be removed because he wants to have full control over this world and he knows his time is short. And the wrath of the enemy upon this world is going to be like no other time in history. It will be horrific. We are not appointed to wrath, 
but those who are in Christ are appointed to salvation and he will come for the church, for the body of Christ. I think the Lord allows these things to circulate because it further proves the account in the Bible that the church will be removed. So for the believer, it's encouragement to see this false doctrine circulating because it just further shows the enemy knows that the rapture is a true doctrine and that it will happen and he is preparing for it. Please share this with friends and family or anyone that you know of that is deceived by this new age teaching that is circulating. And I don't know what circles it's circulating in. I just know that I was sent this and it gave me an opportunity to share with that person the truth that is found in God's, God's word and the rapture of the church that was written 2000 years ago, way before any of these false doctrines or books were written about new age theology and new age doctrine and these doctrines of demons and this UFOlogy that's going around. So the word of God stands true and the devil is just a copier. He cannot create anything. He just mimics what the Lord has already done and what the Lord has established is good. Satan tries to come and create a counterfeit. So this counterfeit doctrine of these aliens saving the planet is just he's taking from the book of Revelation and distorting it, making the enemy look as if he is the good one. And we know that, in fact, the Antichrist will come as a man of peace, but really he's the man of sin and he will lead many to destruction. So the enemy has a counterfeit in every area, a counterfeit seal, which is the mark of the beast, a counterfeit trinity, Satan, the man of sin, the Antichrist, and this false prophet. This beast system that I believe will take over humanity, almost like transhumanism, mocking the Holy Spirit that comes and lives inside of us. Satan wants to come and live inside of unbelievers and control them, just mocking the Lord. But ultimately, he will be destroyed with the breath of the one true living God and King, Jesus Christ, when he returns with us at his second coming. So be encouraged that these lies from the enemy ultimately point to the truth of God's word and you have a sure promise and you have something to point others to to tell them what's going to happen before it happens so that when it happens people will believe in Jesus Christ hopefully they'll put their trust in Jesus Christ before the rapture of the church but if not They will remember what you have shared with them and what you have told them that is going to happen before it happens. So when the rapture does happen, they won't believe the lie. They will turn to the truth of God's word. And I pray that over all of your family and friends and my family and friends, that their eyes would be opened, that they will not be taken by deception and that they will put their trust and faith in Jesus Christ. And I want to end with the gospel because that is of utmost importance above any in time timeline, whatever you believe about the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, what's most important is that you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross, was buried and rose again three days later for the remission of your sins. You are a sinner in desperate need of a savior. You cannot earn your way to heaven. Buddha will not get you to heaven. Muhammad will not get you to heaven. They are all dead and buried in the grave. They have not risen, but Jesus Christ has. And he has risen first so that you may rise in the resurrection. You also will rise and live eternally with God if you put your trust in Jesus. He is the mediator. He took on your sin upon himself so that you can be forgiven of all of your sins. 
He took our punishment so that we would not have to be separated from God eternally because of our sin. He is the only way to God. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to the Father but through Him. Put your trust in the one who has defeated hell, death, and the grave. He's the only one who has risen and been resurrected to new life. Death could not hold him. Death has held all that have gone before him and after him apart from him, but it will not hold him. It has not no hold over him, and it has no hold over those who put their trust in him. If you believe and trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have eternal life, and death has no hold over you. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you. Maranatha. From all over the world, by the thousands, tracked by people who are intellectually sound, most of whom aren't even Christians, one, a Harvard psychiatrist who interviewed many of them, and they come up with similar encounters regarding what they experienced from all over the world with these supposed space travelers who abduct them and they encounter in specific ways. Now, what's interesting to me as a person of faith in Europe and in America right now, there are more people who believe in UFOs than God. That reminds me of that verse in Ecclesiastes where God says in his word, eternity has been created in everybody's heart. Everybody yearns to worship something. So what I believe is that this UFOlogy, if you will, has become a replacement religion. And one of the things that all of these people who've been abducted say that the space travelers say to them is that the aliens will one day save the human race. Let me say that again, that one day the aliens will save the human race. And then they go on to talk about an event that's going to happen in human history that we Christians call the rapture. Uh, they call it the revelation of aliens where people who believe in Jesus are going to be caught up into the air and taken out of this place. And they tell these people in these alien abductions that this is a good, not just a good, but a very good thing because these Christians are disrupting the harmonic convergence of the world. They are keeping the age of Aquarius from happening here on this earth. So they have been taken up into different spaceships all around the earth and are now circling the earth and having to go through an education camp, if you will, where their beliefs can be resisted and taught better about what is really happening in the world. This is Mother Earth cleansing herself of these kinds of people, and they need to be taken away in order for the great evacuation to happen and then this world to be made well and whole like it's supposed to be made well and whole. It's a kind of beamed up, if you will, experience that they said the whole human race will see, which kind of goes counter to that whole idea of the rapture, taking people out of here and their clothes are on the ground, but they're just immediately whoop, gone. Uh, it, it really suggests more like a Jesus ascending into heaven in Acts 1, verse 8. As he's going up, the disciples are watching him go up and they're asking what's happening here? And the angels come to them and say, why are you looking up? The same one who's going up in the clouds will be the same one who comes back in the clouds later on. Well, there's this idea, according to these space travelers, that these Christians will be taken up into the air. People are going to note it. They're going to ask what in the world's going on. And these space aliens will then suddenly become revealed as they become one of us and give the explanation for what has actually happened. They also say it's going to happen in the twinkling of an eye. And those who are left behind are actually the chosen ones by the gods of this universe to be able to rebuild this world for the way that the gods want it to be in this new utopia. And we see this ascension idea being a way to explain away 
why the rapture has happened for people here who remain. And it's interesting that these space travelers say these people have to go away for us to be able to accomplish all that we want to accomplish here. And I can't help but remind myself here of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 6 through 8, which talks about the disappearance of the restrainer here on this earth. And of course, there have been all different kinds of offerings through the years of who the restrainer really is. Some have said the Roman government, some have said they might do, but they also are people who gives us insight perhaps into end times because I, as a person who studies theology, looks at the whole idea of the rapture and asks the question, how are millions upon millions of Christians going to leave this planet and this planet is just going to keep moving on forward? And the supposition of last week's podcast, and if you want to listen to it, please go to it, is that these space travelers really are demons. They're of the dark, demonic world. And when the church is raptured, they're going to step onto the stage as they have appeared as space travelers in many different forms already. They're going to say to the world, yeah, they got taken up. They're in spaceships right now. They're being re-educated as those spaceships circle the world. But those guys were the restrainers who were keeping the harmonic conversion of the age of Aquarius, the perfect peace, from coming to this world. So they had to be taken out of this place. You, though, who are left behind are the special chosen of the gods of this universe, and we're going to work through you to bring about this perfect peace throughout the world. And that's going to be the explanation for all of those millions of Christians leaving. And I think it's going to be kind of a, oh, okay. And you know how yesterday's news passed by and people just don't think about it much more. That's how the world's going to keep on moving forward, even though these Christians aren't here. And we know from Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 6 through 8, that the restrainer is going to be removed before the Antichrist steps on the scene. And most of us who study the Bible thoroughly really believe that restrainer is the Holy Spirit who lives in the hearts of Christians who are leaving this place. Now, the Holy Spirit will still be here because we know that during the Great Tribulation, there are going to be literally millions upon millions of people who come to faith in Jesus. That's encouraging that in the midst of God's judgment during the Great Tribulation, there's going to be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit and millions are going to come to faith in Jesus. David, how do you know that? Well, Revelation 7 tells me that, that the 140 44,000 Jewish evangelists who go out and preach. It's just clear as a bell there. So the Holy Spirit's going to still have to be here on earth because only the Holy Spirit can draw people to Christ. But the powerful presence of the Holy Spirit in the hearts of believers is going to be the restrainer that is removed that allows then these demonic agencies to start tricking and deceiving and lying to people. I mean, Satan is the greatest liar ever. Jesus said so in John 8, 44. He's been a murderer from the beginning and he is a liar. No truth comes from his lips. So they'll convince the world that this age of Aquarius is about to come, though they also have said these space travelers to different people throughout the ages that these Christians are going to have to be removed in order for the restrainer to be removed. But then there's going to be polycrises, they say, exactly a term that Klaus Schwab, the leader of the World Economic Forum, used this past January 2024 to describe what's going to have to happen in the world. And we believe during this polycrises, it's going to have things like, well, Jesus prophesied about it in Matthew 24 and Luke 21 and Mark 13. Uh, things like a monetary crash and a one-world economic system, earthquakes, uh, wars and rumors of wars, probably a World War III, pestilences released, much worse than COVID, maybe this disease X that everybody's talking about that's going to come on the scenes somehow this year. Uh, There's going to be uh, different kinds of phenomena in the heavens, uh, meteors, and then people during this poly crises, many different crises are going to cry out just like we did during COVID. Remember? When's the normal going to return? When are you going to get back to normal? And at that point, when that's being cried out, the man of peace, the second seal judgment, the man on the white horse is going to ride in and offer peace, peace, and everybody's going to buy it. But it's basically going to be he is the Antichrist. He's the one who controls everything in order to bring that peace into this world. So here's where I want to go today. Uh, As you listen to these different testimonies from all of these 